It's time for The Story Behind the Person, featuring lively, in-depth conversation with compelling guests from our community. And here is our host, Jonathan Van Bilsen. Hello and welcome. You'll notice a different set from our regular shows, and that's because we're recording on the stage of the Town Hall Theater in beautiful Port Perry, in front of a live audience. This is part of the 150th celebration of this wonderful old building. Our first guest today is Connie DiPietro, who has just published another novel. We'll be right back after these messages. Top care with top stylists. Book your next hair appointment with Port Perry's award-winning hair salon, Rosario Greco Styles. The hair experience you deserve. Book today. Call 905-985-0099. Not all Canadians have the time nor desire to manage their finances, and often that responsibility is up to financial professionals. Our goal is to help Canadian families achieve a happy and successful financial future. Visit us, the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management. Welcome back. As I mentioned, my guest today is Connie DiPietro, who has written a number of books. Connie, welcome to the show. Thank you. So this, this, is a, this is great. I love talking to authors because they, they, turn, they go into a world that is totally, totally different from where we live and it's a great place to escape, right? Yeah. So how long have you been writing? Uh, since my son was two. Okay. He's 23 Oh my gosh, now. that's quite so, a yes. while. It's quite yeah. a while. So you obviously have a passion. Are you from this area originally or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you decided one day you were going to write a book. Is that kind of how it went? Uh, no, actually, I was writing for my kids. I was writing okay. children's stories for oh. my kids, just purely for my kids' enjoyment. Right. And my son decided he would tell his teachers okay. that I write stories for them, and they invited me in to read them really? uh, in class. And... They just loved it. So Mm -hmm. I didn't know where to go from there. Right. And I took a course at uh, Durham College in the evening for writing. um, And that, it snowballed from there. Wow. That's amazing. There's a a big writing community in this area. Yes. The books that you've written are in a a similar genre, which deal with what? They're uh, historical fantasy, I would say, with a smidge of romance in there. Okay. So they're Mm -hmm. like sort of like Hallmark movies. I wouldn't say Hallmark at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We won't go there then. There's just a smidge of romance. Right. <laughs> but they don't follow the romance genre right. at all. But I, I know the, the first one here, Shadow of Stones, we've got it here. Maybe mm-hmm. we can put a picture up on the screen. Um, it deals with, with witchcraft, correct? Yes. yes. Which is interesting. What is your interest in that, that area? Um, Honestly, the stories just kind of come to me. I don't okay. know how they come to me. It's just, right. it's almost as if there's somebody on my shoulder whispering yeah. it in my ear and I write. Really? Yeah. Wow. Did, yeah. Do you give that person credit? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever they are. Whoever they are. So, so take me through the process of, so you finished three books? Yes. You're obviously going to do a fourth sometime if you haven't already started it. Uh, I'm working on a totally completely right. different book altogether. So, so you come up with an idea how? I usually know the beginning and the end. Okay. uh, And the middle is a mystery to me, and I find out as I write. Okay. And I, I, it's called pantsing. You sit down at the computer and you start just writing it out, and the story comes out. Sometimes I will plot um, a chapter or two ahead. Right. So I kind of know where I'm going, but my characters are driving the story more than I am. Yeah. Wow. And are they based on real life characters? I mean, they have to be to some degree, right? So because it has to come from within. All of my secondary characters, so my main characters are completely fictional. Right. My secondary uh, characters are all historically accurate. Okay. Which is where the historical comes right. in, the events um, and the, the characters, the secondary characters are historical. And what, what time era are we talking about here? When you- so because these witches travel through time, mm-hmm. Um, it starts out in Lincoln, England, okay. uh, in 1535, right. and they travel through via the megalithic stones that are throughout Europe. Right. Um, and the first one, they're going through Casaldega um, Ridge Circle, and um, they they um, they end up in mistakenly end up 
in, um, oh wait, I said that wrong. Okay. Starts in 1619. Right. Castle in Lincoln. They end up in 1535. Okay. All right. So we're going back in time. They go back right. in time and they end up in Wales. Okay. And they are staying in Lanlogan Abbey okay. in Wales, which again is a real place in right. Wales. Um, and that, of course, is during the time of Henry VIII's dissolution of the right. churches. Right. So that is all historically accurate, okay. that part. It, it ends up at the end of the trilogy, they end up in near future um, in Florida, actually. Really? Of all places. In the winter. Yeah. Yeah. So they become snowbirds. Yeah, they become <laughs> snowbirds. They leave the cold of, right. of England and go to, right. and that's where they end up in Casadega, Florida. And is that in current era? When you say near time, is that? Near future, yeah. Near, so like, it's like post COVID, like, okay. post, yeah. Okay. Wow. And so it is, now it sounds a little bit like uh, the, the basis for the Outlander series, right? Traveling in time through the the Standing Stones, that yeah. type of thing. It, it, so. There, that would be the only. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't mean yeah. to suggest that that she stole all of your ideas, <laughs> but you know it. Uh, <laughs> so, where where do you get this inspiration from? Like, where does this come from? You just think it up. It just happens? like I said, it just it's the story is there. It kind of forms in my head. I know exactly um, how it starts. Right. Um, and I know what I want my, my uh, protagonist mm -hmm. to do and, okay. and how I want my antagonist to prevent her from being able to achieve right. her goal. Um, but it, it's just, it kind of just comes to me. Yeah. There's no real plotting the story down. And right, you don't do big outlines no. and stuff like that. And no. uh, Interesting. How long does it take you to write one? A long time. I'm yeah. not one of those, you know, six months and it's done and yeah. ready for publishing or anything type of authors. Well, you also have three children and a life to. I have, have four to lead. children. Four children, sorry. Yes. And a yeah. life that you have to yes, lead. Yes, exactly. Fact, so, so let me bring that back a bit. So you have four four children, a husband, and you're trying to write books. So what do you do? Wake up at three in the morning and write for an hour? Is that? Uh, <laughs> I initially um, I was doing it. So when I started writing, my younger kids would go down at you know, their bedtime, and I would write from there on in. Right. My older ones would be doing their homework, and if they needed me, I would, you know, go in between. Um, now it's kind of whenever I get a chance, right. I sit down and, and yeah. write. I, I imagine also the, the train of thought has to be there, like it has to be a continuation. You can't just write half a page and walk away from no, it. No, you have to, you what have to have I usually do is I finish a chapter. Okay. Um, the kids are starving and yelling. Kids but, are but starving. That doesn't matter. You know, right. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. They know where the fridge is. <laughs> <laughs> so you've written the book. You finished the first one. What do you do with it? Uh, I put it away. Okay. And begin the second one. Oh, okay. So literally, I don't look at it. I don't look at editing it. I do nothing. And okay. I start writing the second one. When I'm done the second one, I go back to the first one. Right read it like it's brand new right. because I haven't seen it in so long. Um, and then I start doing my own self editing at that right. point in time okay. before I hand, hand it off to the editor. <laughs> so, so your editor would then do structural edits as well as grammatic? Structural and then bring it back to me. I'd okay. fix it, send it back to them, and then they do grammatical. And you're usually pretty good with what they tell you? Yeah. 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 Okay. I have you as a writer, you have to have a thick skin. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Anytime you put yourself out there. I mean, a book is sort of, it comes from deep within you, right? It's mm -hmm. very emotional. It's your own personal story. And it's your baby. Yeah. And for somebody to look and say, oh my God, you wrote that? That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'd be very, very devastating. I get that. Um, yeah. So you, you have an editing network, you finish it, and it's ready for publication. I actually finished all three okay. before I went to publish any of them. Okay. One, because I wanted to make sure that whatever was going to end up being, like I said, I know the beginnings and the ends, but I don't right. know the middle. And I want to make sure that they're all strung together right. by certain themes or there's okay. a certain, so there, was, there were times where I was like, oh, I'd be writing number three and thinking, oh, this, this is something good that could go into one and two. Right. And I'd go back and I'd add those things into it. Okay. So then that way it kind of, ties them right. why tighter. Don't, why don't you just do one big book, 600 pages or 800 pages? Well, whatever. because who would buy that? 
I guess that's a good that's point. That's like, you know, you look at War and Peace. Are yeah. you buying that to sit down and read? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, but it does help me if I need some height in my chair. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. That, or it right. makes you look really intelligent. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what what's the publishing process? Do you self-publish? Do you go through? Self-publish, okay. the, these ones. I um, went through Amazon. Right, which um, is a big, big way of doing it. Like, it's a great way of doing it's it. It's a now. great way of doing yeah. it. Um, and they make it the process Quite easy, actually, yeah. as well. The quality is amazing, too. Like, this cover is just beautiful material. Thank that, you. So, <clears throat> the pictures for the cover, I'll just, I'll hold it up again, we'll put it on the screen. The picture for the cover comes from where? That somebody... somebody actually, got, it's a, a graphic designer out in uh, the Ukraine. Really? Yeah. And the internet is amazing. You can find... Okay, so you just, you found someone... Found somebody you? that, uh, one of my other writer friends suggested right. this company. Um, reached out to them and they were amazing. Okay. So, because it, it looks it looks fantastic. I, I was wondering actually if it was an AI image yeah. when I first saw it. Yeah, no, but, they um, did the graphic design and everything. Are you going to write your next book with AI? With AI for the writing? Yeah. Absolutely not. No, okay. <laughs> no, All right. I actually did play around with it, I have to be honest, yeah. just to see what it, what it yeah. uh, produced and it's... I mean, yeah. maybe eventually one day, but currently. Well, the, the downside of it is it chooses from the internet, which is not 100% right. accurate, right? Right. So that's, uh, so the next series is going to be about what? Uh, the next book is completely different from this altogether. It is, it's set in modern day okay. um, with modern issues and. Right. And really? Yeah. So it's not a historical book. It's not, not a. Not historical. It's, is it a romance it's, book? Uh, romance no, song? it's women's fiction. Okay. Be good. Yeah. Along the same lines as this has very strong feminist lines right. going through it, and so does my okay. modern one. But it's just set in. And is that something that you just felt it's it's a good way to to express the story you wanted is through fe yeah. yeah through through a, a female and a protagonist as compared to a male? Is it just a comfort factor? Is it just a fact that it flows better? Uh, it, well, for these, it's she was witch, right? Um, and at the time when they were hanging witches, they were mainly women. Okay. Um, but any of the other stories that I've ever written, any of the short stories I've ever written, whenever they've come out, some of them I've never said whether they were male or female. Really? And people have just decided what they are. That's interesting. Yeah, and uh, there's been a couple that they have decided are male in the short stories. I am going to read these. Mm -hmm. I've, I've started one, I'm going to read them. Unfortunately, our time is up, it okay. goes very quickly. Yes. Especially when it's a lot of fun, and it was. Very interesting. Thank you so much for being part of it. Thank you for having and me. And thanks for sharing your information, your stories. You're welcome. Please stay tuned. Our next guest will be Jody Reed. We'll be back right after these messages. Pet Value has a fleet of services to help you and your pets to live their very best lives. Visit Pet Value in Port Perry to discover a world of expertise, friendly staff, and everything you need for your pets. Pet Value. Your pet. Your store. Organizing an event, promoting your business, or just need to get noticed? At PP Print, our sale flags, lawn signs, and car branding will get you the attention you need. PP Print, more than just printing. At Voss, your independent grocer, it's all about hometown living and shopping. Owned and operated by Terry and Christine Voss, their newly renovated Port Perry store carries many local items to support our town and its residents. Welcome back. My guest in this segment is Jody Reed, a psychic medium. Jody, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jonathan. So I'm really intrigued by this entire area of expertise that, that you have. I know very little about it. Tell me how this works. Yeah, for myself, um, I think every, every reader is a little bit different, but for myself, they show me in, I use three clairs. So clear seeing, clear feeling, and clear knowing. Okay. And it kind of comes all in a ball. So uh, it plays out like a little movie and I have to decipher what the images mean okay. um, to relay it to a, a, into a message for my clients. And is this something that you were born with? Well, obviously you were born with, with the gift, but is it something that you sort of honed in on at a very young age? Definitely, I had moments. I didn't know it was abnormal. I didn't know it was what it was at the right. time. I just thought everybody knew that. So if I had a friend, I kind of knew things beforehand about them. But okay. I thought that was normal. So growing okay. up, I didn't really pay much attention to it, but got into the metaphysical part of things, the reading, the crystals right. and everything um, in my teen years. 
uh, still kind of ignored it, went into the medical field for 27 years. Okay, and, really? Yeah, yeah, and kind of pushed it aside. Uh, knew I wanted to open my own business in holistic wellness and started Which you off. did, right? Which you, I you, did, yeah. yeah. And you yeah. said it was in Lindsay. I it think, is, yeah. yes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Calm Surrender. Um, so I started off with the um, energy healing and quickly started to see images and stuff. And it, Really? Yeah, and it developed into... Isn't that kind of freaky? Didn't that kind of uh, scare you a bit? It didn't at all, actually. No, no it, was a, it was quite a warm feeling, and I think I shifted from one level of healing to a different level. And I, I do okay. feel like through the readings, people get healing. So, you, so you're a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. Does that imply that there are people that are just psychics? Yes. And what would the difference be? Yes, so um, uh, from what I've learned through other readers, uh, they have the ability to know things, but not necessarily connect to people on the other side. Okay. And I think mediumship uh, is exactly that, connecting to past loved ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you do this through seances or is that, I, I'm trying to differentiate between sure. Hollywood and reality. I just watched Haunted Mansion, Disney's right. Haunted Mansion, <laughs> okay. just in preparation for this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you do differentiate between, uh, mm -hmm. like it's not like it is on TV, right? No, not at all. And I think really Hollywood has given like Ouija board, tarot cards, all of that really right. a bad name. It's, it's just a tool to use to connect. Uh, for myself, I don't use the tools, I just right. scribble. Okay. Um, so that kind of helps me get into trance, I guess, right. and connect to the other side. Okay. So I always connect to somebody that my client's connected to, even if they didn't even know them. Okay. So, so somebody passes away from this life, mm -hmm. and what, they just kind of hang around and wait for someone like you to say hi? Um, like, kind of. Um, I believe, or what I've learned, and I've done over a thousand readings now, so... Yeah and uh, worldwide actually, so that really? was kind of cool. Yes, yes. Where's, where's, um, let's just break away for that. Where's the neatest place? Um, Dubai. Really? Yeah, oh, There's Dubai. a lot of spirits there. So uh, why were you in Dubai? Um, I wasn't in Dubai, I did it um, via Zoom. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So but, it, spirit comes in equally as well, whether it's over the so phone or- So spirits use Zoom too? Because yes, of the they pandemic, do, of they course. do. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, yeah, so when we transition, I believe like the body dies and the ego dies, but the soul continues on to pure love, pure consciousness. Okay. Um, and in my view, just in another dimension. So they are okay. around us. They can and be in. So they don't have the form that you see on TV or the form that we have. Did you say the ego dies? Right. Oh, that's sad. Right. That, that, that's going to kill me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so they just kind of hang around forever? They, they like, do. It'll um, be crowded, right? So. Like, <laughs> They, I, what I've what I've learned just through them and through channeling mm -hmm. is that they can be in more than one space at one time, like a different dimension. Yeah, sort of okay. yeah, and um, I do believe they are around and kind of at our beck and call when they really? when we need them. Absolutely, so to watch they, for signs and symbols. They're always here. Have you ever f come across any that aren't very friendly, very happy? Like, you know? no, okay. no, never experienced that. They will show me though if they were an unhappy person here. Okay. Um, so kind of like a validation to. <laughs> we have visitors. It, okay. Um, <laughs> there's a noise in case you didn't catch it. There's a noise behind us. A bit loud noise. And the rest of it is just me shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. They just send validations. Okay. Um, through signs and symbols. So if they're not happy on on Earth as a person, then you sort of get that feeling of unhappiness. Right, so they'll show me that they right. weren't the happiest person. Right. And sometimes they can be quite comedic about it. Is <laughs> that right? Oh gosh, yes. Um, wow. Using certain words <laughs> that we don't want to say, but oh. uh, yeah, labeling themselves. Really? Um, so I'll come out with that and they'll be like, absolutely. Um, so wow. just their way of validating what they, they played out here on this plane. So do they, do they tend to, and I don't know what the terminology is, I'll say hang out for lack of a better word, sure. in the area that they enjoyed when they're on earth or where they died or like what, what so, for, so this building, for example, the town hall, it's 150 years old. Mm -hmm. there, there are, I'm, I'm sure there's a, there are a few spirits in here. There are probably a lot of spirits in here. Yes. So <laughs> why would they be here as compared to uh, Roy Thompson Hall or as compared to Castle Loma or so Whatever. I believe they leave an imprint okay. of where they've been. 
So if it, it was important to them, you'll feel the essence of them. Okay. Um, and people feel it differently. Um, I actually had the opportunity to do a walkthrough right here at the town hall and okay. we were able to um, pick up energies that kind of really? hung out here. And Okay, yeah. so there are some spirits here yeah. right now maybe. I would think so, yes. Really? Okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, quite they, nice. Did it, good. <laughs> did they ever hurt anybody? Uh, no. Are, not, they're not able to, to actually touch and make things move, right? Uh, well. Just say no. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So, um, so how do you, like, I'm trying to get sort of picture. So you're sitting here and there are spirits here, but they're not... You, you don't feel them right now, or you may feel them, but you don't see them. You can't negotiate or talk to them right now, right? Um, so I, I can. I can speak to them, um, okay. or more, they speak to me, right. and I relay what they, they are saying So is saying there anybody here who wants to say anything to me while you're um, here? There is a gentleman here, and he what? comes across like a father-type figure. So okay. dad has passed. Yes. Yeah, is mom on the other side as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so they come together. Okay. Um, and... <laughs> Mom, mom can put your dad in his place when she wanted to. Right. Um, and, but they also show me, I don't know if you were connected or somebody was connected to like farmland. Uh, no, not, not that, uh, no. I, and it, it shows me like cows. So I, and again, I'm going to have you hold on to it because yeah. the other thing I have to say is I share everything I see, even if okay. it doesn't make sense to me. Right. That was part of the agreement. But I always find that even when you can't, Recall at the moment, yeah. somehow it'll surface. Yeah, I milked a cow once when I was about 11 or 12, but that was about it. That <laughs> seriously? Was, that was, yeah, that was about it. Okay, that, yeah. that could be that connection. Really? Like truly, seriously, it could be, and this is what I tell my clients, never to overthink anything that comes out. It could be as simple as a memory. Really? Absolutely. It's amazing. Yeah. It's interesting. So I'm, I'm not sure how I feel, whether, you know, <laughs> whether to be afraid or just, so they can't see what I'm doing though all the time, can they? Because you'd be really upset. <laughs> I, I think they respect our privacy. <laughs> oh, good, good, Whew, good. So, you you do this for people at any time. Like if if someone comes up to you and and knows of your reputation, and they say, "Hey, um, can you do a reading or can you contact someone?" You you can't actually contact a certain person, but you can see if that person wants to be contacted. Correct. Um, in my experiences, yeah. absolutely, we can channel uh, people by request. Okay. I, I've not had um, anybody not come through that was requested, so right. they were able to validate certain things. Okay, so you have like a contact list for all the people, and you just <laughs> dial them <laughs> up sort the of thing. Yeah. yeah, the roll it, roll it yeah. Yeah. And how, how do your clients react to this? Because sometimes I'm sure there's information that is not always great to hear. For sure. And I think there is a way of delivering it so it's healing. Okay. So um, in my experiences, anything that has come through that was kind of uh, hit the feels or it was uncomfortable emotionally, right. it actually helped them transition. Okay. So move out of that, what they held on to, right, that right. didn't feel good in, that, in, right. in their life, to move forward and okay. remove that block. And these spirits, do they ever disappear forever? Or do they just, there's nowhere for them Not to go? Not that I've encountered. Not that okay. I've encountered. This, it kind of knocks the heck out of religion. Right, your theory. A do little you, bit. Do you get into situations where, I mean, you must have a lot of people who are skeptical, right? Who oh, don't believe, yeah, right? Yeah, I love it. I love it. But do you get into situations where, where it's a confrontational thing with, with people? Never. No? Okay. I've seen skeptics shift into believers. I could which see is that. I, you know, I mean, a believer is not going to become a skeptic. You know, I, right. I get that. I, I, I haven't seen that. No, no I, I can't <laughs> see that happening, but I could see a, a, a skeptic coming, a believer, especially if there's truth. And I, I don't really want to know <laughs> the truth, you know. I'm, I'm okay where I am. Um, I, I understand that there are some people, some spirits in this building that are from way back when. Yes. And because somebody had said there was like a, a little girl who wanted to be an actress or something. Yes. Who hangs out here all the time. Yes. Yes. And I, I'm assuming she's not here right now. She is. She and is. Of course, fact, she's here right now. Every time I come in this building, that's that's her and the the caretaker is who I feel immediately. The caretaker. Yes. Okay. And are these people who lived a long time ago or recently? Or do you know? Um, do you, from what I feel. Yeah. A long time ago. But you don't actually know who it is as a person. Like you can't go look up on the internet who that person was then, can or can you? 
Um, I guess with enough description, we would yeah. be able to do that, but um, not necessarily. No. I don't always, sometimes I get names and uh, more information, but not always. Okay. It, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just glancing out there. I just, <laughs> you know, I believe you that they're here. I just don't necessarily need to see them really. Right. And, and I can't, right? Like I, I have no, I don't have this power, this ability. You so do. I you have this do. ability. A hundred percent. You're not making me feel any better about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's whether or not you want to accept it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I'll just, you know, tonight when I go home, maybe I'll just kind of look around. No, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm going to turn the TV up as loud as possible, turn all the lights on. <laughs> it, uh, it's very interesting. I just, um, I just find it very interesting. And a lot of people, I think, need this too, right? They need that closure in their life with, with things that are left unsaid or people, people get angry and then somebody passes away and you never have a chance to resolve. So I'm imagining that, that that's a big part of it. Many it, times, um, yeah, yeah, many times. Wow. You're and I think it's just comforting for them to know that they still have that connection. That's, of course. Now, they, you do this as a live, for a living, right? I do, yeah. yeah. And, and your store is doing well, too? It is. Thank pop you. Up there. We're going to put the name on the screen, and we're, the location of that, and Lindsay. Thank you. I'm swing by. Maybe we can have another conversation about some of the people that, I, I'm going to think about this, people that I really want to talk to. And, Absolutely. You know, cause there, there's one person I know, he owed me about $30, and he passed away. <laughs> oh, jeez. So maybe we could do something there. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him there's interest attached yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah, let's not tell him anything. Um, <laughs> listen, our time is up. It went well, really thank quickly. You. Thank you so much. This is interesting. It's a very interesting subject, something that I'm certainly not familiar with. Thank and you. I, I think that uh, we can do this again sometime and continue on. I would love that. All thank right. you so much for having me, John. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. Please join us every month right here for the story behind the person on Rogers TV.